Hi, I'm Geo Gypsy. Welcome to the Sonoran Desert. I'm currently boondocking southern Arizona. It's the end of March, early spring, and I'm exploring this amazing landscape. I'd like to share with you about the diversity of the plants and the animals found here and how they survive in this arid desert environment together. Many think the desert is a dead place for the lack of green and flowers. Yet this dry, arid environment is full of life upon closer inspection. Notice how desert plants often cluster together and form a community, much like we do. Let's take a look at a desert nursery. Just watch where you walk, as many things here this is a nice community of desert diversity. Palo Verdes tend to be the tallest tree around and often act like a protective parent, providing shade and sometimes helping out with water. In the Palo Verdes case, photosynthesis can occur on the trunk and the branches. You might notice that lovely lime green color and some of last year's leaves still hanging on but also notice the thorns that can snag an unwary visitor. You might expect to see leaves in the spring, but it's been an exceedingly dry winter and plants conserve water by not producing leaves or they're really, really tiny. Pack rats will often build huge nests nearby made out of just about anything that's not tied down, even that shiny earring you may have lost. But don't go digging to the nest, as it's full of cactus spines and urine. Not a nice combination. Burrowing animals also make a home in this nursery. Not sure who dug out this hole. And it looks a little small for coyote. I'm going to say maybe kit fox. And that's because I did see some kit fox scat or poop nearby. Yet badgers and ground squirrels and even some birds will nest in a previously dug burrow. Up high in the Palo Verde, you may also notice clusters of a darker color mistletoe, a parasitic plant that photosynthesizes and produces berries that many birds eat and then poop the seeds and spread the plant around. If enough grows on the tree, it eventually can kill the host. Another tall plant found in this desert community is the Akatillo, with its many spiny branches reaching for the sky. Not a tree. This succulent produces leaves several times over a year, but only after rain. This has been an exceedingly dry winter, so the Acatillo is producing only flowers. Hummingbirds will pollinate the flowers while taking nectar. Ground squirrels and other birds will eat the flowers and disperse the seeds. Creosote bushes about four feet tall or so are scattered around as they clone by root and actually make a big happy family. You see a bunch of them out here. And they're the most commonly seen species out in the desert. This evergreen, I think of it as sort of an olive drab uh, green, produces these spring flowers, bright yellow. They're already starting to go away. The foliage can hide grasshoppers, praying mantis, and crickets that occur only on this bush. Many burrows are seen around this bush, and that provides multiple choices to the squirrels that are nesting down below front doors and back doors. Easy escape. After rain, the creosote bush flowers produce a pungent scent 
that fills the air, contributing to the petrichor, or smell of this landscape when rain comes to a dry country. A tea made from the leaves makes a good expectorant to treat coughs and open up congested air passages. Well, it worked for me. As you can see, many plants grow in the Sonoran Desert that aren't cactus, but there's a lot of those too. So I always carry tweezers in my pocket, just in case I get too close. One of the worst uh, offenders of spines is the jumping choya. Okay, they don't really jump, but these segments fall off and then they get to be blown around by the wind. And they easily attach to anything, skin and clothes. They have sharp, barbed spines. They glow in a light. And they almost look huggable. But don't do it. Saguaro cactus are the icon of the Sonoran Desert. They're usually seen as tall and stately with many arms. Yet they frequently start life under the shade of a Palo Verde tree. Their slow growth means no arms until about 50 to 75 years, and they can live up to 200 years. The skin and spines of the saguaro act like leaves, and they're capable of storing great amount of water. So they will flower every year, even in times of drought. Flowers come out and open at the night in May and June tips for the arms of the saguaro. That invites in nectar feeding bats and birds and bees. Then the flowers result in fruit and both of those are eaten by animals and by us too but very carefully. Birds create nests by enlarging insect holes in the Saguaro, and that reacts by building a scar tissue around that hole and makes kind of a hollow cup-like shape called a boot. Inside the accordion pleated plant, it contains woody ribs that actually provide a strong skeleton. In fact, here is a down saguaro, so you can actually see the skeletal inside and those wonderful ribs. You'll also notice that it has a very, very small root system. It's because there's not enough water to go deep, so you got to spread out. Last but not least, my favorite, the Oregon Pipe Cactus, found only in the far southern reaches of the North American Sonoran Desert and also in Mexico. This multiple branched upright structure resembles the pipes of an old-fashioned organ, you know, the musical instrument. Growing to the height of about 16 feet, it takes 150 years to reach maturity. Like the saguaro, the skin and spines act as leaves, and it also produces flowers that open at night, inviting nectar feeders. Another reason for the name organ pipe cactus could be because the spines can actually be played like a musical instrument very carefully. Do not attempt this at home. You know, I could go on and on because there's just so much more to see and share here in the Sonoran Desert. But I encourage you to actually get to be in a place. It's one of the reasons I come out here and I boondock. I want to be surrounded by it all. And that way I can wander and walk, well, as I call it, sauntering, and then explore and learn more about the plants and the animals and how they survive together 
in this harsh, arid environment. I encourage you to do the same. Go out and learn about the places you love. And then share the information. And please remember to respect everything around you. Oh, here, including the ants and the lizards. Thanks so much for joining me uh, as we learned more about the Sonoran Desert and I learned more about making videos. Uh, please feel free to leave comments and questions below and uh, I'll get back to you. I'm also going to try to add some links for further learning. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe, hit that red button. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Joe Gypsy out.